everybody, and welcome to the Lawrence at Home. My name is Teacher Bia, and I'm one of the educators at the Lawrence Hall of Science, and this is another episode of our series, Stories in STEAM, where we tell the stories of different scientists throughout time. Before we get started with our story, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like if you want to see more science videos from us. And today we are telling the story of an Ethiopian scientist called Signet Glimo, and I'm very excited to share the story with you. So let's get started. All right, here we are in our cover page. This is going to be the story of a scientist called Signet Glimo. She was a plant scientist who helped improve agriculture around the world. And there's quite a big word here in this first sentence already, agriculture. Have you ever heard this word before? What do you think it could mean? Hmm. Well, agriculture refers to any type of farming and cultivation of food. So you can tell already that that's a very important aspect that has a huge impact on everyone's life because as humans, we need to eat every day. So Dr. Kaleno's work helps improve agriculture around the world, especially in countries that need a lot of help in that sense. So let's learn more about the scientist. Dr. Segnet Kilemo is a molecular plant pathologist. That's a very big word, right? This means that she focuses on studying diseases in plants. She focuses on finding solutions to diseases of crops caused by bacteria and fungi. Well, so plants actually can get sick, just the way that we and other animals can also get sick. And Dr. Kilemo is an expert in trying to find solutions for these diseases as well as prevent them in the first place. So her word has a huge impact in agriculture and food production. She says that the drive of her life is to make a difference in people's lives and improve agriculture in Africa. And as we learn more about the story, we're going to learn where this drive comes from, where her motivation comes from to be so um, motivated in helping and making a difference in people's lives. So let's see how she grew up. <clears throat> Saganet Kilemo was born on May 20th of 1957 in a town of Fanat Salam, Ethiopia. And you can see Fanat Salam over here in the map is where this red dot is and it's located in the country of Ethiopia in Africa. And there she grew up with her parents and six siblings. Like many kids in her region while growing up, she was going to school and at the same time helping her family with different farming chores. She came from a town where the majority of people worked in farming, worked in agriculture, and that included the kids that would help out as well. She showed a strong sense of responsibility and she was trusted by her mother to oversee the sale of the farm produce in the market and negotiate the best prices, even though she was the middle child. So although she was not the oldest kid, she was the one that was trusted with negotiating the best prices in the market when selling the things that her family would farm at home. To understand a little more about how Dr. Kilemo's childhood was, I have here a quote by her and when she's talking about her childhood. She says, as a woman, you were not supposed to walk fast. You had to look down when talking to people and only speak when spoken to. Women were not supposed to shout, climb trees or play soccer. And I did all of these things. I rode donkeys, played soccer with the boys, and ran when I wanted to. From this quote, we can see that Segnet Kilemo did not go along with the customs of how women were expected to behave in her region. She said that most women in her region would get married very early on. However, because she behaved so differently than other women, she did not have any suitors. There weren't any one that were interested in marrying her at the time. Um, and for her, that ended up being a good thing because that allowed her to continue studying and go to college and have the career that she has today. 
So by observing how the people around her were constantly worrying about ways to feed themselves, she felt a call to help and decided to study science and agriculture. She says she knew how in a nearby town, some people that had gone to college were able to come back and help the town with the struggles that they face day to day. And that really inspired her. She also wanted to make a difference in the place where she grew up. She became the first woman in her region to go to university, and she attended Addis Ababa University in the capital of Ethiopia. She was one of a total of five women in a class of 200 students. She decided to study science and agriculture, and that particular field was one that was very dominated by men. However, her and some of her other classmates for acting as pioneers and paving the way for other women to study science as well. After receiving her university degree from Addis Ababa in 1979, she continued her studies in America. She got a few scholarships and she came to study in the United States. She earned a master's degree in plant pathology and genetics at Montana State University. Then she continued studying to get a PhD, a doctoral degree in molecular biology and plant pathology at Kansas State University. And after that, she joined Cornell University as a postdoctoral researcher. So you can tell that she has done a lot of studying and researching throughout her academic life. Let's see what she does after that, after she finishes all this schooling. After her studies, in 1992, she moved to Colombia and began working at the International Center for Tropical Agriculture as a senior scientist. So she moved to yet another country, this time Colombia in South America, and started working at the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, or CIAT, where she would help develop and have a huge impact in agriculture in many different countries. She was there for a long time and she advanced in her career and became the leader of crop and agroecosystem health management. She was able to get a position of leadership within that organization uh, and she held that position until 2007. So she was there from 1992 all the way until 2007. And while working there, that's when she met her husband, Arjun Gisman, and later they had a daughter together named Fanat Gisman, and she was named after Kilemu's hometown. So not only her time in Colombia had a huge impact in her career, that time also had an impact on her personal life as well. Her work at CITA had a large impact and she helped train many scientists from all over the world. Because of that impact, in 2006, she received the Friendship Award by the People's Republic of China for the role that she played in their agriculture research and development. So while working at CIAT, different scientists from all over the world would come and work and train under Dr. Guillermo. Because of that, her work was having an impact in a lot of different places of the world. And one of these places, one place where she trained a lot of graduate students was China. And because of the impact that she had in the country, she received an award. She says that receiving that award was really a turning point for her. While she was standing on the stage, receiving her medal, she decided that it was time for her to go back to Africa and use her knowledge and skills to contribute to advancements in agriculture in her home continent. She said that she actually felt embarrassed that she was making such a big impact in a different country while her home country was struggling and needed her expertise as well. If you remember from the beginning of our story, her initial motivation to study science and agriculture was to have an impact and help people back at home. But she had gone to different organizations, she had a wonderful career, but she was not doing what she intended to do when she decided to become a scientist. And then she decided to act on that. She decided to go back to Africa. So she was recruited and accepted a position as the director of the Biosciences Eastern and Central Africa Hub based in Nairobi, in Kenya. And under her leadership, that organization grew tremendously. 
She was in charge of building this program from the ground up, and it eventually became a driving force that is changing the face of African bioscience. So for a long time, she was at the Becca Hub that is part of the ILRI, the International Livestock Research Institute. And that organization really focused on studying insects. Like you can see in this picture here, a lot of different insects. And you may think, well, I thought that she was a plant scientist. Well, <clears throat> insects have a huge impact on plants. Some insects can cause diseases on plants, but plants also depend on insects for something called pollination. That is the way that flowering plants make fruits that have the seeds that can grow new plants. So insects have a huge impact in agriculture and they are also the most abundant and diverse types of organisms on earth. So there's a lot more insects than there are any other types of animals and there's many more different types of insects than there are types of other animals. So insects have actually a huge impact on the earth ecosystems, especially when it portrays to agriculture. So in this organization in Nairobi, uh, Dr. Kilemo was in charge of building this whole program from the very beginning. She was trusted and supported by the leader of the bigger organization, and she actually succeeded and built a program that has a huge impact in bioscience across Africa. So let's see what happens next. So later in 2013, that probably is about six or seven years later, uh, Dr. Kalemu joined the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, an organization called AGRA, as vice president for programs for about a year. But since that job didn't really involve research and innovation, she did not stay in that position for long. So in November of the same year, Dr. Kalemo became the Director General and CEO of the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology. That is Africa's only institution dedicated to research on insects exclusively. Uh, so that institution is only focused on studying insects and the broader impacts that insects have. Uh, that organization is also based in Nairobi, Kenya. And this is where she works to this day. She was the first woman to lead the institution. So we can see that she accepted a new job um, at a different organization, but <clears throat> her drive and her passion is for research and innovation. So she didn't stay on that position for long and instead moved on to a different organization focused on finding solutions for agriculture across different places in Africa. Dr. Sagnet Kalemo's hard work and dedication to innovate has impacted the life of millions of people, not only across Africa, but also in regions of Asia and Latin America. She received many awards and recognition for this work. But outside of that, she says that she likes to spend time with her family. They like to play games, cook together, go on vacations, watch movies, and read a lot. She says that she especially enjoys reading biographies. Biographies are stories that tell uh, about the life of certain people. So this story that you are watching right now is actually kind of a biography too. And she really enjoys reading them. She says that her favorite was Picasso's biography. So that's pretty interesting. And that can tell us that scientists are serious about their work and work really hard often, as well as many other professions, not only scientists, and like many other people, scientists also like to have fun and do different things outside of work as well. She also enjoys gardening and listening to Ethiopian music. She says it brings her peace and sanity. So, but unfortunately her husband and daughter don't really like Ethiopian music, she said in an interview, and that she was confined to listening to her music in her car by herself, but that she still really enjoyed to do that. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of today's story. I hope that you enjoy learning more about this amazing scientist that had a huge impact in agriculture and therefore food production throughout the world, especially in different places in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. 
This story, like most stories here in Stories in Steam, tells us that anybody can become a scientist and there are many different ways that scientists can help others. If you want to learn more about Saganet Kilemu from her own words, I've included the link to some videos and other articles and interviews in the description below. So you can definitely check those out if you want to learn more about her. And if you want to learn about other scientists, you can also find a link to our Stories in Steam playlist down in the description box as well. I hope that this story inspires you. And if you enjoy the story and want to see more videos from us, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. But thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Teacher Bia, and I'll see you next time here at the Lawrence at Home. Bye-bye!